All right, welcome to another video. Now, this video will talk about conditioning, something that is very, very important in programming languages. Without uh, these conditions, a lot of these programs actually are meaningless. In real life, conditioning happens every day. Every day we're making decisions. Uh, and we're gonna take a look at these, how we make decisions in programming and in uh, computer uh, algorithms. Now what we're gonna do in this year, we're gonna learn how to implement what we call an if statement, a condition, single condition or multiple conditions. We're gonna look at the structure of these conditions in Pythons and the correct logical operators. And we're gonna write some code to show you how to solve different uh, computational problems. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at this if statement. What is an if statement? As Bill Gates said and gave an example here, like for example, we use conditions on a regular basis in every uh, minute of our life. For example, we say if it is raining, we usually wear or carry an umbrella, all right? So here, for example, it says if it is raining, if the beginning of the condition, raining is the condition, if it's true or not, and then if it is raining, if it's true, we carry an umbrella, all right? There are another, there are many examples in life. Here's another example. For example, if you'd like to buy an item, you're trying to make a decision. Okay, does the price make a difference to you? If it does, then you have to look at the, if the price is correct, then you buy the price. Does the quality, is the, is the quality important to you? You check the rating of this, of the, of the product, if it's good or not, again, you're making decisions on a regular basis. And now, how you translate these decisions into, uh, into your program is how we're going to show you uh, in this video. All right. As I said, it is written, conditions are written in, uh, it's called if statement, okay? And this if statement is very common in all programming languages. It's usually the, almost the same structures, all right? So I'm, uh, I'm gonna show you in the next part how we do it. Now, the, the outcome of this if statement, it's either true or false. Now, usually if it is true, we do something. If it's false, we skip it, and we don't do that, uh, that block of, or, or that process, all right? So how it is done in Python. Now, you see that you have an if, and then you have a bracket, just like the uh, for loop, if you remember? And then in the, when we use the range, and then you have colon, all right? So the, the condition, what we're gonna see next, but usually this is how the structure of an F statement. You have F, a condition, if that condition is true, it does everything underneath it and indented inward. That's part of that F statement. Now you have else. So sometimes you say, if it is raining, where can it take an umbrella? If it's not raining, don't carry an umbrella. So you say else. Another example, if the weather is cloudy, take an umbrella. Else, do not take an umbrella, all right? So the potential of uh, rain might be high, so I take my umbrella, all right? So that's how usually structure the if statement. If condition, if the condition is true, you do something, and then you continue afterward. If it's not true, we go to the else statement, say if the condition is not true, we go to the else statement and we do something different, all right? So that is really the, 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 the structure of an if statement. Now you're not gonna see this, you're not gonna see the value of this until you actually try it. And that's when we, plan, when we, do to the, when we go to the live code, you'll see a lot of, we're gonna do a lot of examples to explain this uh, and you get you familiar with it. The rules for an if statement, it has to be an if, the keyword if is a keyword and it has to be lowercase. It has to end with a colon like we did. And the keyword must uh, be, uh, the keyword else must be, if we use else statement, we, we must be a lowercase. The else statement is, is an optional. It's not always you have to have an else statement, but if you use it, then you have to have, uh, it has to be a lowercase. The key uh, again, we, and then also the key, the else statement, the else uh, state uh, keyword must be followed by a colon. Same rules apply to it as if statement, by the way, in which is has to be indented inward. Okay. 
This part is actually very critical. This is the part that is actually part of your condition. Typically, what do you do with the condition inside these brackets? You're comparing two values. For example, you say, if A equal 5. How do I say A equal to 5? How do we do it? We say A on one side, equal, equal, and then the value that we want to compare it to. All right? So if A equal B, you say, for example, A equal, equal B in this example. That's how you do equal comparison. Now, if you want to do not equal comparison, what do you do? You use the explanation mark and equal. Or you can use the less than sign and the greater than sign. Either one is fine. This is when you're saying one value is not equal to another value. Now, you can use uh, the greater than sign to say, if you're comparing a value, is, if a, uh, a value is greater than another value. Remember that maximum? The maximum uh, problem that we had in the first, when we were talking about the different algorithm? This is how you compare it. For example, say, if the number that you're looking at is greater than the, max, or the, uh, greater than the maximum number that we had, now I do my process of swapping those two numbers. So that's how you do uh, comparison greater than. Same thing with less than, all right? Now there's another operation here that's called, for example, greater than or equal. So you're looking at any value that's greater than that number that you're looking at or at least equal, all right? So that is how you do that. You say greater than or equal. And the last one is less than or equal. All of these are very similar to any programming language. Most of them are actually the same as in any other programming language, all right? There are a couple more things that you need to be aware of, and those becomes a little bit uh, challenging. And again, as we do more exercises, then you will see it uh, to make more sense. Typically, we have conditions are not in life. There are complex conditions. All right, and usually, for example, you say, if the weather is sunny and it's a weekend, I want to go on a holiday. I want to go uh, to the beach, for example. I like the beach, so I'm going to go to the beach. All right. So, how do you implement these conditions in uh, in uh, programming languages or Python's? So we have something called and, we have something called or. For example, in here we have if A is greater than 7 and B is less than 3, so we're looking at a range, okay? Uh, and uh, those conditions, those two conditions must be true. These two conditions has to be true in order to actually complete the process of uh, in that if statement. The other one that is actually more, uh, it's less restrictive, which is what the or. You're looking, if you have multiple conditions, then you say, if one of these conditions is true, then you're okay. So if A, A is greater than seven, or B is less than seven, then you are, this condition is fulfilled, and, uh, and then you can, uh, the process is, is implemented. All right. Uh, when you have more than one condition, it is recommended that you actually group these conditions within brackets. Why do I say that? If we take a look at this example if we, in a minute here, if, you, uh, if we have this example, sometimes that you don't know what conditions uh, ex executed first. So what do you do is that you group your conditions, the one that you want to be executed first, together. In this case, for example, we have condition one, condition two and condition three. So you say, if condition one is true and bracket condition two and uh, or three are true. So in this case, condition one, two or condition three can be true and condition one has to be true for this, for process one to take place. Okay, I'll repeat it again here. So we have a complex condition here. This condition is composed of three parts. Condition one, condition two, and condition three. And we have a process one that needs to be executed, and we have process two, all right? 
for process one to be executed, condition one must be true. And, uh, and either condition two is true, is true or condition three is true. Why? Because we said that a condition and means that if, uh, the, uh, both part has to be true. So for part one to be true, condition one has to be true. For the second part to be true, which is condition two or condition three, one of them has to be true because we're using the keyword or. So if that's the case is true, then process one is executed. Else we execute process two. All right, that's a little bit complicated. Again, we promise you when we do the exercises, we will do a lot more of exercises on this part. So the, the ideas are actually uh, stick in in your brain and then you can do more complex uh, conditioning. All right, here's an example that you need to do. We're gonna do to, we're gonna do it together. We write an exam, write a Python program to calculate the cost of insurance based on the age. If the age is of the subscriber is more than uh, or equal to 40, the cost will be 500 each month. Otherwise, it'll be 300 a month. Okay, so that is typically what happens in when you're working in, in, in whether you're working in a company or in real life. You have conditions. You're given these conditions. It's your job how you translate it into an algorithm that a computer can understand and solve for you. In this example, we're giving you just a basic example. How we're defining a variable called age, we're assigning a value 50 to it. And then here's my insurance equal to zero. Here's two variables, one is age, one is insurance. And my here is my condition, my if statement. We say, if age is greater than 40, then the insurance is 500 else the insurance is 300 and at the end I print the insurance now I'll give you a scenario now this is typically that I mean in this case I mean the, the logic is correct but the input of age is fixed so it doesn't really make sense so what usually happens is that you you write this code these programs give them to somebody and so that that uh, uh, clerk or the sale agent is using these programs so as a, as a customer that comes to you says, well, you can ask the, what is your birth date or what is your age group and then you give the uh, price accordingly. We're gonna modify this example to show you how we actually ask the user to enter their, uh, the, the, uh, to enter the age of a person and then that user, that program would tell him what is the cost. That typically what happens in programming. All right, so we're gonna move to the next uh, screen. Now notice before we go with an if statement again this is a typical mistake that most people make is that colon is needed right with the else and with the if okay without these colons you will get an error on your program. All right uh, here is the same program same example but now we're making it more user friendly and more not more user friendly I would say but more functional okay it makes more sense because you want somebody comes and asks for quotation, you don't want to say higher hard code it into your program. You want to make a variable and ask the user what is their age is, and then based on that you do the calculation. So we have defined an age variable. Now we're getting it from the user. Get enter uh, uh, what is your age. Remember algorithms. Remember when we talked about usually we have. We have data acquisition or inputs, right? That is your input. We're asking for the user to enter some value that we're collecting the input. Based on that input, we process that input, your algorithm process that input, and then you produce your output. So that we got that input, the age, and we convert the input because to just to be on the safe side in Python, we take that age and then we convert it into a number. So I say, when Dr. Hamad talked about data types, one of them is integer, okay, floats an integer. So we say I'm converting the age into an integer value and, and storing it back into age. And now I, I can do my calculation, my, my checking. If insurance equals zero, if it's greater than 40, it's 500, else it's uh, 300 and I print it out. All right, so that is, uh, that is how we use uh, condition. That's how we use uh, how we use it in our processes. And notice that if you change this, for example, if you enter 30, what would happen here? First, you 
your you you convert the value into age and to integer so now 30 is stored into integer then we go to the line six it says is age greater than 40 it is not so it goes to the else statement and now insurance becomes 300 now you exit the if statement and then you print out the uh, the value all right now in the next part dr hamad will tell you more about nested if statement and uh, as promised at the end we will do uh, live code to explain all these concepts